Let's talk about how to use the brush masking tool in Photoshop. This tool has a lot of application um, for being able to help you improve your images or to be able to create images the way that your vision saw the image, but isn't necessarily the way that the image came out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to the develop module because that's where we're going to find this tool. And it's going to be this mask tool over here at the end. And if you haven't used Lightroom in a while and you've used Lightroom previous to some of these newer additions, if you felt like your gradient tools disappeared, this is where they have now come to live because you can use the gradients in here. We're going to be using the brush tool today, which is we're not going to we're not going to take the easy route out and and select um, subject or sky or background, we're actually gonna use the brush to be able to do some alterations to the background of this image. Now, this image, um, I really didn't intend to shoot it as a black background, but it could work as one, or it can work one that's pretty close to that anyway. Um, let's go ahead and dive into how to use this tool. So I'm gonna select brush, and that's gonna give me a brush. And like in all Adobe products, I can make my brush small by clicking the left bracket and bigger by clicking the right bracket. So if you don't understand masking, masking is where we work on, in Lightroom's world anyway, masking is where we work on a specific area of an image that we designate. Now we can say that that designation is the subject or the sky or the background, or in this case, where we apply this brush. So what we're gonna do is just simply stroke with the mouse um, over the area that we want to affect. And I'm just going to roughly do it. I'm going to get close to my horse over here. I don't want to get right on top of him. I want to make sure that I select all around here. And then I'm going to add to this area. So I here's my brush one, and you can see what I've selected here. I'm gonna, I want to add more to this because I want to affect more than just that area. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to add... Um, we're going to add to the mask and we're going to add with brush again. And I'm going to adjust my brush way down because I'm going to get a little bit more in this area up here around his ears and his pole. So we're going to select that. Okay, I made a little boo-boo here. So I'm going to click subtract and brush. And I'm going to come up here and, and fix my boo-boo where I got into his hair. Probably wouldn't have mattered all that much since we're going to do something with black anyway. Um, and then I am going to get my brush again. I'm going to click on add and I'm going to click on brush. And I'm going to get this palette out of my way. <laughs> so I'm going to stick it back over there. I just pushed on it, by the way. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to get the same wall here behind my subject. So right there, I'm just going to kind of stroke around her hat. And since her hat is black, we're just going to kind of ignore that because what we're going to do is darken that background. So, okay, now everywhere that it is red is what is going to get affected by the changes that I'm going to make next, okay? Um, so everywhere where you're seeing bright red, that's the mask. That's the, the area that I am working on in this particular case. Um, so when we have our mask selected, I'm going to come down here and there are, okay, there's our mask is done. Let's go back here. Whoops. Hate it when that happens. Luckily it's there. So now I want to be able to affect what is in this particular area. So I've clicked back on my mask. I got off of it somehow, but now I can affect things in this particular mask. What I was trying to do was get this to behave itself again. Let's just peel it off and stick it over here. Okay, here's my mask and here are my um, adjustments. When I start making adjustments, you're going to see how things change. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the exposure on that the background down a lot. And I am going to really um, drop in the shadows and drop down the highlights so that they're hardly not noticeable. And I'm going to bring up my blacks a lot. 
And so basically now I have blacked out the background. I may just add a touch of that back in to give me some texture. Okay, so I've effectively created a black background here. Now I have some touch up here that I need to do. I've got a little spot of light right here above the horse's head. So I can come in here and I can click on add and brush again. And then I can come here and just brush that away. So like so, boom, done. Now my photo, and if I wanna brush a little harder over this area, um, I might create another mask to cover this or come back here and adjust again. I'm gonna, I don't know how that palette decided to go back over there, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop that black down because that was bothering me over here. So now I have done a black background image from an image that just had simply a dark background. That's how simple it is to use a brush mask here. The rules are that um, you need to create a new mask for everything you do. So for example, if we wanted to create, to let's say in this same image, I want to come back in here and I want to lighten around this horse's eyeballs. So that mask that I just did is not going to work for that. I would have to create a new mask. I'm going to click on brush again. I'm going to select the area that I would like to lighten. So let's lighten over here on this eye too. And then I can change that. I can adjust my exposure. I could pull up the shadows in that area. This image really didn't need this by the way. Um, however, and then I can like even whiten things up here. So I could even whiten that piece up. So, but now I have two masks and I can see both of my masks here. I have mask two and I have mask one. I can hide these. So if I hide them, there's my background. And if I hide this one, there's the hide for that one. So you can stack the masks on top of each other. Um, you can name the mask. So this, we can name this one background and we could name this one um, eyes. So you can add these, you can stack as many of them in here as you want to be able to stack in here. I think I selected that right. No, I screwed it up. <laughs> this needed to be eyes and that one needed to be background. Okay, we'll fix it so it's right. Okay, so you can create as many of these as you would like. You can stack them up um, and put them on top of each other and do a lot of fine editing in here in Lightroom very easily uh, that you used to have to take on over to Photoshop because there was a lot more that you could do over there. This particular tool has allowed us to be able to do a lot here. You can adjust um, a lot of things over here. You can adjust treatments, you can adjust um, hues, you can adjust color grading. And remember when you're masking, you're only affecting one part of the image and you're leaving whatever isn't selected alone. Just so you know, there is a way that you can select the inverse of some of these things. <clears throat> um, it is up here under the three little dots and you can say intersect and you can invert it. So if I wanted to invert it, and this is gonna look horrid, so sorry for in advance. Um, basically it's blacking out the horse and revealing the background. <laughs> So let's go ahead and invert that back to what it was. So, but you can invert it. So if you have selected the wrong thing or it's not affecting the image the way that you want it to, maybe come in here and look at invert because possibly you did it the opposite of what it needs to be done. Hey, I'm dyslexic. I do stuff the opposite all of the time. So I'm really thankful for inverts and inverses and being able to save me in that. Okay, this was Lightroom Classic. You can do this same thing on your iPad. Let me get set up for that and I'll switch over to the iPad and show you what that is like in just a moment. Let's do the same thing we just did in Lightroom Classic on the iPad. And the thing that is so cool here is we have one of these little doohickeys to play with here, which is the Apple Pencil. So let's go ahead and head over to the mask area. That's gonna have the same symbol in Lightroom CC on the iPad that it had on Lightroom Classic. So we're gonna touch that. It's just laid out a little bit differently. 
So down here at the bottom is where we're gonna find our plus sign. We're gonna touch that and we're gonna choose brush. That's gonna bring up this little palette right here. Um, that we can expand um, and it has our brush size, um, feather and flow. If you have it collapsed to its icons, the way that you make your brush bigger is you touch on it and then you pull out to the side and up is bigger and down is smaller, okay? The same thing goes for flow. If you pull out, it makes it bigger, in it makes it smaller, or you can touch it and use the little slider here as well. The same thing goes for opacity. We're at 100% opacity, which is what I wanna be for this particular brush. Um, this brush is a hair bit big, so we're gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit smaller. And here, all I need to do is just start using my Apple Pencil. So I'm gonna go around here, around the horse, and as I get closer, I'm gonna need a smaller brush. So I come over here, now I have an eraser that I can use now that I've added some things to it. So if I need to erase something, I can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and make that brush a bit smaller so that I can get up here around this area. I can get in here close to the horse's face. Here's the thing I love about the iPad. I am going to do this gesture so I can zoom in right up here by the horse's face and I can go ahead and get all of this. And as you can see, that has some texture to it, which I'm fine with for a black background, but I can come up here with my pencil and I can get right up here next to the horse's face. I can get up here next to her hands. Um, I can start just making that red. I don't need it to be perfect because there were a lot of shadows in this image to begin with. Um, come down here, I can zoom into this particular area and then just come right along her hand, come down in here, and just do some broad strokes of painting here. That's fine. I don't need it to be perfectly even for this application. I'm okay with that. Up here, I can come along the hat. And again, this photo is gonna look fine. Um, I kind of messed up there, so let's erase a little bit of that. So I've picked my eraser to come in here and, and just adjust that back. I'm gonna grab my brush again. And now I'm gonna get going around the side here and down here like so. I'm gonna make my image smaller. I'm gonna make my brush bigger um, so that I have a little bit more flow here out to this area. Does not need to be perfect for these black background images. It just doesn't. I mean, it can. you can come in and change it and perfect it all that you want later. Okay, so there's my selection. Now I'm ready to make my adjustments. So I'm gonna come up here to my light and I'm gonna adjust my exposure down. I'm going to drop down um, the highlights and the shadows all of the way. And then I'm gonna adjust my black point down. And you'll see very similar to what we saw in the Lightroom Classic version, I have a little bit of light right here that just didn't get taken care of. Whoops, I had my eraser on, I need my pen. So, um, and I need a little bit smaller brush so I can come in here and just take that off with the brush. And then I can come around my horse and clean up if I need to. I got a little spot of light over there that I can get rid of. And then up here around her hat, I can just come and take my pen and just kind of move around her hat. Uh, and I don't like where this horse's ear shows up over here. If this were gonna be a black background image, I would wanna like lessen that. It kind of draws your eye over there, which I think is uncomfortable. The black background images are all about the shadows. So that gets me pretty close. There's a little couple of Photoshop things in there that I could do to clean that up. Same principles here as before. If you wanted to add another brush, you can do it here. This plus sign will add a whole nother mask. If you wanted to do the thing where we lightened the eyes, you could do that by clicking here. And again, you have all of these different options for being able to adjust that particular area of your image. If you want to delete your mask, um, 
you can uh, come over here and just hold down on this and a menu will pop up that will allow you to duplicate it. That's kind of handy. Didn't know that was there. This is where you will also invert it or you can delete it from that particular spot. So once you're done, you can click on done and then it puts that image back into your um, library uh, with the correction made to it. That's it for this video. I hope you get out there and explore um, both Lightroom, uh, the brushing masks on both Lightroom Classic and get out there and try it on mobile a little bit too. I'll tell you, once you get to loving this Apple Pencil, you really won't want to go back to anything else. Mm -hmm.